Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. everyone hail and welcome to another episode of the random heathen ramblings podcast thanks so much again for coming back here this week tuning in listening watching supporting uh, absorbing all this the way you do much appreciated um as always this podcast is brought to you by spotify for podcasters you're going to hear a few ads throughout the throughout the podcast as as a nod to uh to them and um yeah, you know, there's technical stuff that goes into all these productions. Of course, you're probably listening to this on YouTube and Apple, Google Podcasts, wherever else. I know a lot of my listeners are um, catching their podcasts on Apple, but I'm everywhere, guys. It's it's crazy. Uh, Pandora, I think, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and of course, YouTube, which pretty cool thing is if you uh, have the YouTube music uh, thing going on, you know, you can like watch videos, but then you can also listen to music. Uh, podcasts are now featured on YouTube Music. So there's just, you know, they've always been on YouTube or they've been on YouTube now for a while in video format. But if you're just wanting to listen in the background and YouTube is your thing, you can find me uh, there on YouTube as well. So all over the place. Um, and I want you guys to enjoy this week's episode um, with a bit uh, more of a laid back sort of attitude. I'm going to be a bit more laid back um, this week on this episode, because we're not really going to be discussing much of anything. Um, it's story time. It's story time here on the podcast, okay? Um, and uh, I wanted to just, you know, kind of lighten things up a little bit. Um, I get a lot of posts or comments on on, on stuff that I post, and uh, you know, some of, some of these people that, that, that take time out of their day, I, get, I don't know if it's just trolling or whatever, but it takes its, its, takes its mental toll on me to, you know, engage with them. And I know that's a choice, and I don't always have to, but sometimes it's, it's hard to resist. And um, I figured, you know, I need a break. <laughs> I need a break from that. Um, and I just wanted to do something a little, kind of a little fun and um, read one of, the, one, of this, one of the poems in the Poetic Edda. Um, I'm going to be reading from the Jackson Crawford translation of the Poetic Edda. Um, I have another translation. It's a, a more recent publication. Um, it's like a study uh, Poetic Edda, so there's like a lot of <clears throat> academic footnotes and stuff. Um, so it's a little bit more tedious to read through, having you know some of the some of the things annotated for study purposes. But this is just going to be a straight reading of a poem. Uh, in the Poetic Edda, called Grinnismol. Um, I love this one, um, but this is actually one of the um, poems that is found in the original um, Codex Regis manuscripts, as well as um, the AM 748 I-4TO manuscript. So it's a, it is an early uh, poem, and um, it's basically a story um sort of um told in a, in a in a prose fashion as it were or there there there's prose prelude and um and stuff and that, that that's all part of the original poem okay um but it's essentially what it is 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 odin is is disguising himself as a um a cloaked individual his name of course in the poem is grimir so Grim the Small is the words of Odin in disguise. It's it's Grim the Small is 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 the name of the poem. And so Grim the Small, kind of like Havamal, words of the high one. These are words of Grimir. All right. And uh, so he, anyway, Odin is disguised under the name of of Shadowface or or Grimnir, which mean Old Norse means like shadow or or cloaked rather. Um, and he's held captive in a court of a king who. He wants favored, and um, he delivers mystic or mythic lore to the king's 
sun. Um, and so the prelude, we're just going to, you know, jump right into this. And this is what's this is what is going to be this week's podcast. We're not going to be talking too much about anything. I would just like for you guys to enjoy. Mm, however long it's going to be, it's it's a not a very long poem, but I'm sure about for the next uh, 20 or 30 minutes or so. You'll be listening to me recite the poem Grimnismal. So I hope you all enjoy it. Don't forget to uh, like this podcast, share it around, upvote it, whatever the thing does uh, elicit for you to do, please feel free to do so. So we're going to start with the prelude and just run on through it. So once again, this is from the Jackson Crawford translation of the Poetic Edda, and this is the poem Grimnismal. King Hraufung had two sons. One was named Agnar, and the other, Geroth. Agnar was ten years old, and Geroth was eight. The two of them rowed out in a boat with their fishing tackle and hoped to catch some small fish, but the wind drove them far out into the sea. In the dark night, they wrecked and went up onto the land, where they met a poor farmer, and they stayed there with him over the winter. The farmer's old wife fostered Agnar, but the farmer fostered Gareth and tutored him. Early in the spring, the man gave them a boat, and when he and his wife followed them down to the shore, the man spoke to Gareth in secrecy. The boys departed, and the wind was favorable. They came to their father's harbor, and then Gareth, who stood foremost in the boat, sprang up on land and shoved the boat back out to sea, and said, Go wherever the trolls take you. The boat drifted far out to sea with Agnar, but Gareth went inland to his father's hall. He was received well, but he learned that his father had died. So Gareth was taken as king, and he became a famous man. Odin and Frigg sat in Hlithskjalf and looked out over all the worlds. Odin said, Look how your foster son, Agnar, sits and fathers children on a troll woman in a cave, while my foster son, Gareth, is king and rules the land. Frigg said, but Gareth is so stingy with food that he starves his guests if he thinks there are too many. Odin said that this was a tremendous lie, and so he and Frigg made a wager about it. Then Frigg sent her servant Fula to Gareth and had Fula warn him that a sorcerer had come to the land, but that this sorcerer would be recognized by the face that even the fiercest dog would not attack them. It was in fact an idle rumor that Gareth was miserly with his food, miserly with his food. All the same, he ordered any man who would not be attacked by any dog to be apprehended. Odin came wearing a blue cape and called himself Shadow-Faced, or Shadowed Face, but said nothing more of himself even when asked. So the king had him tortured in an effort to extract more information from him and had him placed between two burning fires where he sat for eight nights. King Gareth had a 10-year-old son named Agnar after the king's brother. Agnar went to this Shadowed Face and gave him a full horn to drink and said he thought his father was behaving poorly to torture a man without cause. Shadowed Face drank, and by then the fire had grown so large that it had begun to burn his cloak. Then Shadow Face said, You're hot, fire, and much too big. Get away from me, flames. My coat is getting burned, even though I'm holding it up. My clothing is on fire. I've sat between the fires here for eight nights, and no one offered or gave me food except Agnar alone. Now Agnar will be the sole ruler of the land of the Goths. Hail Agnar! It's the chief of the gods who's wishing you well. You will never be repaid so well for one drink, no matter how long you live. I see a holy land which lies near those of the gods and the elves. In that place, Thruthheim, Thor will live till Ragnarok. 
Ur has built good halls for himself in Idalir. The gods have Frey, the land of Elfheim, or the gods gave Freyr the land of Elfheim long ago as a gift in his youth. I know a third place where happy gods live beneath a silver road. It's called Valaskjalf, the place Odin made himself in the old days. A fourth hall in Sokvak Sokvakbeki, which the cool waters crash upon. There, Odin and Saga drink happily every day from golden cups. A fifth land is Gladheim, where gold bright with where gold bright sorry, where gold bright wide Valhalla stands. That is where Odin chooses from the men killed by weapons every day. Valhalla is easily recognized if one comes to see it. The hall is held up by spear shafts. It is roofed by shields. Chainmail is on the benches. Valhalla is easily recognized if one comes to see it. A wolf hangs above the western door and an eagle above him. Thiasi, the mighty giant, once lived in the sixth hall, now known as Thrymheim. And now Skadi, bright bride of the gods, lives in her father's old home. Baldr built himself a hall, and it is called Breitalik. That's a place where I know you'll find little grief. Heimdall's, Heimdall inhabits the eighth hall, Himsbjorg, that is where he is the master. In that pleasant house, the watchman of the gods happily drinks his good mead. Freya rules in the ninth land, Folkvang, that is where she arranges the seats. She chooses half the dead who die in battle, and Odin takes the other half. The tenth hall is Glitnir with gold walls and a silver roof. The god named Forseti is there on most days, and he settles disputes. The eleventh hall is Njord's, which he built and named Noten. That flawless lord of me that lawless lord of men rules the high timbered temple. The wide land of Vidar is overgrown with high grass and winds. That bold son of Odin is preparing himself to avenge his father on horseback. Andrimir the cook lets the pork from Seyrimir cook in the cauldron. Eldrimir, there is no better meat and there are few who know what the Einheriar eat. Battle-winning Odin feeds his tamed wolves, Geri and Freki, but for his part, weapon-loving Odin lives on wine alone. Thought and memory, my ravens, fly every day, the whole world over. Each day I fear that thought might not return, but I fear more from memory. The wave thunder and the Midgard serpent makes his home in Fenrir's sea. Dead men will find that sea passage too wide to wade. Valgrind is a holy gate with holy doors upon a field. The gate is old and there are few who know how it is locked. Thor's hall, Bilkskirir, Bilkskinir, has 640 rooms if all are counted. I am certain that of all roofed houses, Thor's is the largest. I think Valhalla has 640 doors, if all are counted. 800 Einherjar walk through each when the day comes to fight Fenrir. There is a goat named Heidrun who stands on Odin's hall and gnaws the limbs of the tree Lerith. That goat fills Valhalla's cups with bright mead from her udders, and that drink will never diminish. There is a stag named Elkthrimir, 
who stands on Odin's hall and gnaws the limbs of the tree, Lareth. Drops fall from his ho- hooves, or sorry, uh, drops fall from his horns into the well of Hit Vengelimir, and that is the origin of all the rivers. The rivers Seeth and Vith, Sekin and Aiken, Svold and Guthro, Fjorn and Fimbulfur, Rhine and Renari, Gipo and Gopu, a bunch of names that I'm having a hard time pronouncing. <laughs> uh, la, 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 then it's come the gods' riches. <clears throat> another river is Vina, another Vegsvin, a third is uh, Lothnuma, and also Nit and Not, Non and Hron, Sith and Hrith, Sirg and Irg, Vith and Von, Vond and Stond, Gyol and Lept. These rivers flow near the men who die and go to hell. Thor will wade for rivers every day, the ones called Kort and Ormut, the two rivers Kerlaug, when he goes to meetings at the tree Yggdrasil. Bifrost, bridge of the gods, burns in bright flame, and the holy waters seethe. The rivers Glath and Gilir, Glair and Skredgrimir, Oh, these names. Silfriop and Sinir, Yisil and Baal, Hofnir, Gurtop, and Leitefi, the gods of Asgard, ride their horses every day over these when they go to meet at the tree Yggdrasil. Beneath the tree Yggdrasil are three roots which grow in three directions. Hell is beneath one, Jotunheim beneath another, Midgard is beneath the third. A squirrel is named Radatosk. He runs along the trunk of Yggdrasil. He takes the words of the eagle, tell his insults to Nidog below. There are four deer who stretch out their necks and eat the leaves of Yggdrasil, Dane and Dvalin. Dunyr and Durathor. No food has ever, no fool has ever guessed how many serpents lie beneath Yggdrasil. I think that Goin and Moin, Grobak and Grofluth, Ofnir and Svafnir, sons of the snake Grefnir, will always gnaw that tree's roots. The tree Yggdrasil endures more pain than any man guesses. It's eaten from above by the deer, on the side by rot, from beneath by serpents. They bring my horn, my Valkyries, Christ and Mist, Skegjold and Skogel, Hild and Thruth, Kjok and Hrefjot, Gjol and Gefjol, Rangrith, Rathgrith, and Regniv. They bring the Einherjar's beer. These slender horses, Arvak and Alsvith, lead the sun across the sky, and the gods have hidden cooling between cooling bellows between their legs. There is a shield named Svol. It is set between Midgard and the sun, in front of the shining sun. I know the mountains and the sea would burn up easily if that shield ever fell down from there. Skol is the name of the wolf who chases the sun till it sets at evening in the woods. Another wolf named Hati is Forthreitir's son. He runs in front of the sun, behind the moon. The earth was formed 
from Ymir's flesh, and the sea from his blood, the rocks from his bones, the trees from his hair, and the sky from his skull. The happy gods formed Midgard for humans whom from Ymir's eyelashes. They formed all the grim clouds from his brains. Whoever first puts out the fire will have the help of Ul and all the gods. The realms will be upon so all the gods when the, when the kettles are cooked. In ancient days, the dwarves made Skrivli, uh, Skivladnir, the boat, the best of ships, for handsome Freyr, the strong son of Njord. The tree Yggdrasil is the best of trees. Skivladnir is the best, sh best ship. Odin, the best god. Sleipnir, the best horse. Bifrost, the best bridge. Bragi, the best poet. Habrok, the best hawk. Garm, the best dog. I have shown my face in the presence of gods. Now help is on its way. It will come to all the gods on Aegir's benches when they drink at Aegir's place. I have called myself Grim. I have called myself Wanderer, Warrior, and Helmet Wearer, Famed One and Third One, Thunder and Waves, Hellblind and One Eye, Truth and Swift. And true father, battle merry, battle stir, curse eye and fire eye, evil doer, spellcaster, masked and shadowed face, fool and wise man. Long hat and long beard, victory father and war ready, all father, war father, rope rider and hanged god. I have never been known by just one name since I first walked among men. They called me Shadowed Face here at Gyrth's place, but gilding at Asmund's they called me Driver when I pulled the sleds, and Mighty at the assembly among the gods I'm called Wish Granter, Speaker just as high, Shield Shaker, Wand Bearer, Greybeard. Wise and wisdom granter were my names at Solkmimir's hall when I deceived the old giant and I killed his famous son. I was his killer. You are drunk, Gareth. You have drunk too much. You have lost too much when you have lost my favor. You've lost the favor of Odin and all the Einherjar. I've told you much, and you'll remember little. Your friends will deceive you. I see the sword of my friend dripping with blood. Now Odin will have a weapon, weapons killed man. I know your life has ended. Your guardian spirits are anxious. They see Odin here before you. Approach me if you can. Odin is my name, but before, they called me Terror, and Thunder before that, and Waker, and Killer, and Confuser, and Orator God, Heat Maker, Sleep Maker, both Gilding and Father. I think all these names were used for me alone. King Gareth sat with his sword on his knees, halfway drawn. When he understood that this was Odin who had come to his hall, he stood up and wanted to take Odin out of his flames, or out of the flames. But the sword fell out of his hand and fell hilt first to the ground. The king tripped and fell upon it so that the sword pierced him through and he died. Then Odin left and Agnar was the king of that land for a long time afterward. Well, there you have it. There was the 
fairly poor reading, <laughs> I have to admit. Um, some of those names were just getting to me, and I don't know, the maybe the smoke in my eyes, it was just, it was a bit of a challenge, you could tell I was struggling through it, so apologies for the, for the less than stellar delivery um, of the poem, Grim the Small. Um, but yeah, I thought it was cool, you know, like, again, didn't really want to just get too deep into discussions this week, I just, I needed that lighten it I needed to lighten it up a bit you know and I hope you guys can appreciate that but it's kind of cool because you know um, a couple weeks ago or I don't know within the last month I think we had um, we had a couple of guys we had Roger and uh, Robert on uh, from the runestone heathens of, uh, of Ohio Southwest Ohio I think talking about some stanzas from uh, from the Voluspa and there was mention of some stanzas in, in you know, uh, Grimness Mall. Now, of course, this is an English translation that Jackson Crawford um, offers. And, um, you know, some of those names, I was tripping over and mispronouncing them, I'm sure, horribly. So apologies for those of you that are uh, catching this and going, well, you said it wrong. It should have been this. It should have been that. I fully admit that it was uh, not the greatest reading of it. So I'll do better. Um, for next time if we do another one of these but it's cool because like I said we were talking about um, some of the names of the halls of the gods and then Grimness Mall is where we hear the various names mentioned you know Freya has one um, Freya has one Thor has a realm Bragi has a realm Baldur has a home Heimdall has a home of course right like all these various halls or, or realms in Asgard but they have, they have their own separate domains um just like we do just like we have all our own separate homes or domains you know so it's kind of cool to remember that episode and come back and reread it again so if you guys were wondering that was grim the small if you want to reread it yourselves or pull out your own copy or i'm sure there's i'm sure there's uh you know copies available online as well so you can probably find that on a number of websites, but yeah, it's called Grim the Small, and yeah, so, um, before I go real quick, um, just want to do a quick shout out, I, I, I posted, uh, or mentioned in last episode, there's a, a volunteer-based organization, it's called, uh, Sacred Trail Society, the Sacred Trail Society, and it's, and it's an uh, affiliate of Appalachian Animism. So if you go to AppalachianAnimism.com slash Sacred Trail Society, you'll find out more. Um, this is a, again, a, a volunteer-based organization. Um, and all it is for is, is to inspire folks to get out and pick up litter, pick up trash, you know, um, on nature, nature ways, trails, um, greenways, streams rivers you know parks even places where people go to enjoy the tranquility and the, and the beauty of nature where it has been unfortunately um you know t t uh, taken advantage of and, and trash has been left there so you guys have probably seen the posts um hopefully at this point now on on, on my channel on, on midgard musings on the page there but there's also a facebook page there is an Instagram account, and then there's the website. So, you know, if you go to Facebook and you go to you know, Sacred Trail Society or at Sacred Trail Society on Instagram, all that information is going to be annotated down in the description and show notes of the podcast. Uh, so please be sure to follow um, each of those accounts if you don't mind, and then do your part as well. Um, there's recently been some merchandise release. There's, I think, stickers, patches, maybe... Uh, some shirts, there's like tote bags I think that are going to be, if they're not already, being made as well. Um, but it's for a good cause, you know, so if you if you guys want to get a decal or a sticker or a patch or something to put on, you know, your jacket, your shirt, your vehicle, um, check it out, check out the website, again, it's AppalachianAnimism.com slash Sacred Trail Society, uh, links will be in the description and show notes of the podcast for you guys to follow um and i am co-founder of the of that organization so it's it's me uh, my patrick uh my, my tribal <laughs> i said my patrick he's my guy he's my patrick um patrick our our tribal uh brother 
um, Ulf Aragothi and Papa Olufsen of Yalvatir Workshop. Um, all of us collectively are co-founders of this volunteer-based program. Um, so whatever you do, if you guys do follow it on social media, if you're out there picking up litter, um, you want to share your progress, we would love to share that on the, uh, on the Facebook page and stuff. So whatever you do in the effort to clean up the land and uh, do better in that way, use the hashtag Sacred Trail Society and we'll be happy to, to share that stuff. So um, yeah, just wanted to drop a quick note about that. Um, and aside from that, I hope that, you know, today's episode, even though it wasn't too educational or thought provoking, um, that it gives you just a nice, relaxing afternoon, morning, evening, you know, whenever um, to just kind of listen to a story, listen to one of the tales that, ex that you know, made it um, to the, the original manuscripts, the Codex Regis, um, and has survived all these years and it's a great telling uh, where we hear all the names of Odin and the, um, the various realms or the halls or the homes um, of the gods of the Aesir and the Vanir gods. So um, be sure to check the description and show notes for the Linktree link on all the ways that you can support this podcast. Follow me on all the socials. Um, I do also have merchandise through Spring, so that is going to be annotated in the Linktree link as well. You just go to there and you'll find all of the sites, all the links, the YouTube channel, the Facebook and Instagram accounts, Twitter, um, Patreon, just everything. So whatever that you see down there that suits your ability to support, you know, just feel free to check all that out. Um, so again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Nothing too big, nothing too crazy. Um, enjoy the rest of your guys' weekend. I know we had a, a pretty, you know, cold and crisp start of the of the spring season, you know, with the, the vernal equinox earlier this week, uh, it was, you know, down below freezing. Um, but it's it's gradually starting to get warmer. We're going to be in the in the summer months here before long. So you're all enjoying it and staying safe. Thank you all again for your support and following this podcast. Until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. <laughs> Thank you.